Impedance describes the effective resistance of a circuit to alternating current. It's the result of both ohmic resistance and reactance. But for most of us, there's no need to get too technical when dealing with speaker impedance. In this video, you'll learn what you need to know about speaker impedance in order to design and optimize a sound system. I'll show you why speaker impedance is important, how to calculate impedance for a series or parallel speaker circuit, and I'll help you to choose the best amplifier and speaker combination for your sound system. Understanding the impedance of a speaker is very important when designing a sound system. It will not only help to optimize the performance of the system, but it will also help to prevent damage to your amp and speakers. Ohm's law tells us that as impedance decreases at a given voltage, the electrical current will increase. Your amplifier is only capable of supplying a finite level of current before blowing a fuse, entering protect mode, or being damaged. That's the main reason it's so important to ensure that for a given power output, the impedance of the speaker circuit falls within the impedance rating of the amplifier. For example, this amplifier is specified to provide 400 watts of continuous power at 8 ohms or 600 watts at 4 ohms. So long as you abide by these guidelines, you shouldn't have any issues. But if you attempt to power a 2 ohm speaker circuit, that might cause some problems because the current required to provide adequate power to that circuit may exceed the amplifier's capabilities. Powering a speaker circuit that's impedance is lower than the amplifier's rating could cause the amp to overheat and shut off. That's because the amplifier's power supply and its components are limited in how much current and heat they can withstand. Many amplifiers have protective circuits in place to prevent damage, but not all of them. So it's best to plan ahead and design a system within the manufacturer's recommendations. The impedance of a speaker is frequency dependent, meaning that the impedance at 200 Hz isn't necessarily the same as the impedance at 2 kHz. To make things simple, speaker manufacturers list a nominal impedance in the specifications. Here we can see that this speaker's nominal impedance is 8 ohms. There are three basic scenarios when connecting a speaker to an amplifier. The calculation will depend on the scenario. The first scenario is a single speaker per amp channel. When you're only connecting one speaker to the amplifier, no calculations are necessary. A single 8 ohm speaker presents an 8 ohm impedance to the amp. Remember that some amplifiers have multiple channels. Those channels should be thought of as independent for the purposes of this discussion. The second scenario is connecting multiple speakers to a single amp channel in series. This means that the speakers are daisy chained. The positive amplifier terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the first speaker. The negative speaker terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the next speaker, and so on, until the last speaker completes the circuit to the amplifier's negative terminal. When speakers are connected in series, their total impedance can be found by simply adding the nominal impedance of each speaker together. Two 8 ohm speakers in series equal 16 ohms, an 8 ohm speaker and a 4 ohm speaker in series equal 12 ohms. The third scenario is multiple speakers connected in parallel. The positive amplifier terminal connects to the positive terminal of each speaker, and the negative amp terminal connects to the negative terminal of each speaker. If all of the speakers have the same nominal impedance, you can find the total impedance by dividing that impedance by the number of speakers. Two 8 ohm speakers in parallel equal 4 ohms, 8 ohms divided by 2 speakers. It's a bit more complicated when the nominal impedance of each speaker is different. An 8 ohm speaker and a 4 ohm speaker in parallel equals about 2.7 ohms. Now that you understand why speaker impedance is important, I'd recommend checking out one of the videos that's on your screen now. They'll help you to choose the best speakers and amplifier for your system. 